Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's video, I'm going to be doing something really daring. I'm going to be propagating this variegated Adansonii. I actually have a video on Adansonii care and propagation, so I'm going to link that up above. But for this case, I actually bought this super rare plant that I couldn't really afford. And I'm also going to insert the link of the video here where I show you how I got it and how I felt about it the, the day that I bought it. It's actually very nerve-wracking and this plant actually stressed me out. Although I must say that it has now established and it's not dead obviously. But it is putting out more and more variegated leaves. I do give this very bright indirect light and some morning direct sunlight. And it's recent actually I have pulled it back to give it a little bit more medium light. I put it under a fern so it doesn't get too bright of a light because more light equals more variegation and if you stick this in the dark it's going to put out more and more green leaves. So this is the rule of thumb that I have about variegation. I'm pretty sure, I'm about 99% sure that this is the case although some people may contest that There's, light has nothing to do with it. If you have experience with variegation and light do comment down below if you think I'm wrong comment down below as well. But again, I'm 99% sure I'm right. We, sh we should never ever be 100% sure about anything. Let's just say that we should keep our minds open all the time. We have to assume that we may be wrong and we must always listen to what other people have to say. So that's my two cents about this. But I'm gonna start cutting this up. But before that, I'm gonna give you guys a close up to see how it looks. I gave it a makeshift moss pole here. It's basically just a bonsai wire with some sphagnum moss that I just looped around. So it's not even really a moss pole, but I created this device so that this plant can lean against it and start rooting into it so that when I propagate it, it would already have some roots as we will see soon enough. Okay, so this is the contraption that I gave it. I basically, this is the wire, the top of the wire. So I just kind of jammed some sphagnum moss here, here and just looped it around with cotton twine. And then look at that, that's such cute roots. So this plant has rooted into it. So I'm gonna open this up to see what it looks like. But here's a close up on the variegation. As you can see, this is very, very variegated. I'm very worried. It used to just be one leaf that was variegated. So it's gonna be one green leaf and one half moon. One green leaf, one half moon. But now both leaves have become variegated. And now the third one is mostly variegated. So I, as you can see, I'm a little bit concerned about that. But as I cut it up, the variegation pattern will change. I will give you the anatomy lesson on that later. Hopefully we can see some variegation on the stem too. Sometimes it's not as apparent on the Adansoni eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Let me make sure, yep, we're filming. <laughs> sometimes I need to make sure that I hit the record button because sometimes I didn't. So I'm just cutting out plants, talking to myself without recording. That's happened m more often than you can imagine. Okay, this is looking really beautiful. The internodes are actually very close together, so I'm very worried about it. Look at that. Very, very close internode. So I guess I'm gonna start cutting away. I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer. Okay, so moment of truth. I am so, so freaking nervous about this. As you know, this costs a lot of money, so I don't wanna mess it up. So this is the first cut. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. This is the first cut. And this is actually a very dangerous one because, as you can see, there's only a little bit of aerial roots here, but thankfully I do have some. In many cases, you just have a, a little nub, like a nipple here to propagate from. But for me, I got a good one. And this is very challenging because this new leaf is still hardening up and the new shoot is going to appear from somewhere here. So I have a feeling the next one is going to be very variegated. If you look at this portion of the stem right here, it's mostly white. This is where the new leaf is going to come from. So it's a, it's a gamble at this point. I'm, just, I'm gonna put this in medium light for, for a while. And this is going in water propagation. I don't know if I mentioned that. I don't wanna put plant with little roots like this in water, in moss, because they do need quite a significant amount of water. And if you do water propagation, they can take up that water more efficiently for this, this new leaf and the next leaf that's coming out. So yeah. Okay. This next one looks better. It's just ready for sphagnum moss propagation and because this has like a half moon pattern I really don't even know where the next growth point comes from. Sometimes the growing eye is inside this sheet like inside the other leaf for the Edensonia. It's not always on the outside so I'm trying to see yeah I can't see it. So we'll we'll update it. I'll update you to show you what the, the new leaf looks like. I will be so sad if the new leaf is not variegated. But that happens, so I accept my fate. 
whenever that this is why variegated plants are a bit more expensive because they are a little bit riskier this one also has a little bit more roots and it's only got one leaf to support so this is gonna be okay for sphagnum moss propagation I don't know if I mentioned this, but I have had this plant for about nine months now. I bought it from a two-leaf cutting, and the two leaves have already, already died off. They were much smaller than they, they were teeny tiny leaves. This one's very, very ready for, what do you call it, for sphagnum moss propagation. In fact, it may even go straight into a potting mix, into my aeroid potting mix. Look at the roots. It looks ready. It's already got secondary roots. So this is going to aeroid potting mix. Next one, oh my god, these ones, the internodes keep getting closer and closer, oh my god, I am terrified. You know, maybe I'll take this out of the pot, just so I can actually study the roots better, make sure that I'm getting a cutting with a decent amount of roots. This is so close together. Yeah. I may lose a leaf, by the way, because the internodes are so close together. Oh my god. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna lose a leaf with this one. Or do I want to cut two leaves off? Maybe I will cut two leaves off. This is hard, you guys. This is really tough. Or am I happy with the fork? Do I want to be greedy? Because this is actually a very happy plant right now. And if I leave it alone as it is, it will give me one new growth point from here for sure. And it may even give me a secondary one because this is what Edensonia is do. They do give you secondary branches when you're cut. So if I if I cut it off now, I may lose a leaf or two. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it safe. Sorry, this time. And if you watch my other videos, you know that I go to town with, with propagation. I I cut it way down. So actually, for this one. Because we did remove some of the bottom soil here, I'm gonna put some back. But I'm gonna actually put this deeper in so that I can bury the the node. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. So I'm gonna put this plant a little bit deeper in the pot and then put more aeroid potting mix on the top. We get some more. Yeah, I'm just gonna settle with this for now, I guess. Play it safe. It's your whole life savings in this plant. Okay, and I'm gonna top it up with some slow release fertilizer and my Floridon pesticide to make sure that it's doing okay. And I may give it another moss pole when it's ready. Uh, and I may actually just stick this up here just because. I don't wanna lose this little Sorry, is it too close? I don't want to lose this little thing. But I may have to move this position because I don't know where the new shoot is going to be facing. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And maybe top dress it with a bit of moss. Just a little bit. <laughs> Alright. Thank you so much. Get well soon. <laughs> Hopefully give me more variegated leaves. <laughs> okay, so let's do this one first. The one that is in, going to be an aeroid potting mix. I have some pots ready for it. So I'm just putting it in. Hang on, let me come around. <laughs> this is my potting mix on the other side of the table. So for this one, because it's not a lot of roots, it's a small plant, I don't even want to fill the entire pot with potting mix. I just want to fill it halfway through. Because the more medium that you have, the more likely it is to pool water or store water in it, and the more likely you are to rot the plant. So I just want to keep it maybe two-thirds, two-thirds full. And then I need to really watch out for this guy. Like, do not let it get rained on for the, for the next few weeks or so. When, when it's got more roots, you can actually water it a little bit more. But for now, it just needs to be humid. Maybe on the dry side, but humid. Never let it dry out completely. And just let the roots find humidity. Moving on, we're going to do the moss propagations. I'm going to start this with this cutting. So with the, the first thing for the moss, this is soggy wet. Squeeze all the water out. Even if it, if it, it sorry, I said stammer my, over my own words. If it gets rained on, be sure to take the plant out and squeeze the sphagnum moss. The plant cannot live in soggy sphagnum moss. It is quite dangerous for them to live in, in those conditions because they just need airy and humidity right now. They don't need wet, soggy wet, compacted 
medium where their roots can't breathe. So now that I've put this in this humid medium, I don't really even want to water this for the next day or so. And then the next, the way that I would care for it would be to give this bright indirect light, but not as bright as before, I think, because this leaf needs more water when it's uh, put in very bright light, but it doesn't have enough roots to take in that much water. So the humidity is the key, some good light is the key, and then just keep an eye out for the potting mix. Look at the color, if it gets light color, that means it's dry, or I can pick up the pot, or I can just put my finger on the top of the potting mix to feel if it's dry or not. I've got a few other variegated Adansonia is propagating now, and it's doing well, it's 100% successfully rooted. So this is how I put it. I left the top of the cutting uh, exposed to air, so it doesn't really have the avenue, extra avenue to rot. Uh, what do you call this? Three in potting mix. So this potting mix, sphagnumos, sphagnumos, and this is going into water. So we've got one of each, so you guys can see <laughs> which ones fare better. Of course, they're all different cuttings, different root conditions, but yeah, we'll see in a few months how these guys are doing. So this is the family portrait before I let you go. I want you to wish me luck, hopefully. Wish me luck, you guys. I hope that these guys all make it. I have a lot of things to pay off with these. I've got more plants I need to buy. So I'll see you later. Bye. Welcome to a one month update on the cuttings. This is the top cutting, which is the most important one. And I remember putting this in water because there weren't a lot of roots. Bam, look at that. This is ready for potting mix. Actually, I'm gonna put this in my aeroid potting mix soon after this video. And then these are the ones that are in moss. I'm gonna go with the bad news first. So this one is a leaf that's put out. I can see from here that it's going to be green. So it's gonna put out a green non-variegated leaf. And if the next leaf after this is non-variegated, that means that this plant will give me a full green Adansonii. So good luck on that. I think there's only a 10 to 15% chance that this is going to give me a variegated leaf. This is the next one. And this is better off, as you can see here. The leaf is half white. I don't know if you can see the next growth point here. So this is hopefully gonna give me some variegations, but we'll know for sure that this whole plant it's going to be variegated after like maybe the third or the fourth leaf. That's when we know that, that the variegation is stable because the first leaf may not determine if the whole plant is going to be variegated from here onwards. This next one is also a piece of good news. It's put out a variegated leaf. So as you can see here, it's half white there. Or maybe it's all white. I'm not sure. We'll find out in a few months. It could be all white, but judging from the little bit of green that we have here, that it may be some green on the inside. I've seen some nurseries grow these and they become all white and then they slowly die off. So I hope that this doesn't happen to me. So now I think I understand why this plant is so expensive. Yes, they are very fast growing, but the chance of their variegation to follow through is so low. I'm gonna show you the parent plant. Here's the parent plant. It looks so sad, but I'm not worried. So it lost one leaf, I guess because it's tired, it's one of the older leaves. Now, this is a new growth point here. It's put out an all green leaf. So, usually it's going to put out a whole new green vine and then over a long period of time, a new or two new branches will appear below and hopefully those will have variegation. As you can see, this leaf here is not really that variegated, so perhaps that's why. So there's two ways I can do this. I can let this just grow out and wait for a few leaves and hopefully one of them will be variegated or after this leaf or the next leaf, I'm just gonna cut it and then this will encourage new branch from below. Okay, so here's an update and this is just one of the cuttings and this is actually going away today. That's why I have to film this update now. And it's put out an almost white leaf, which I'm a little bit worried about, but the next leaf is actually going to be okay. I don't know if it's gonna focus, but it's put out almost like a half green and half white leaf. You can probably see from here from the patio that it's going to be almost half and half. So that's going for a trade. I'm getting other plants with this. So that's why it's going today and I have to say goodbye. And I'm gonna give you an update on the other cuttings. So this is the other cutting. This is the top cutting. And as you can see, the leaves are still doing fine. It tried to put out one leaf, but the leaf kind of rotted up. You can see here that the, there's a little bit of rot here. 
So that leaf didn't make it and then it put out another leaf here which didn't make it. But fortunately, they will keep putting out new leaves from the petiole. So hopefully the new leaf from this last petiole will be unfurling just fine. But I'm not that worried either because if this doesn't work out, uh, because this is a two leaf cutting, there's another node here, somewhere in here, where another branch can sprout. But I have a feeling that this next leaf is going to be fine because uh, yeah, the next leaf is going to appear from the back of the petiole here. So as long as the length of the petiole is okay, uh, the leaf should unfurl correctly. But meanwhile, these two leaves are supplying energy for the plant and I'm sure it's rooting really beautifully in there. Here's another cutting and this is actually the one that is doing the best. This has given me exactly half moon leaves. So I'm not super worried about this one. And fortunately, we have only the mother plant, which I'm going to show you next. So I did decide to try out prop box for the mother plant. We got this Raffida forest. They're not so happy in here, but I guess it's rooting really well, probably. And this new growth is a little bit rotted. I'm a little bit worried, but yeah. So this is my first time trying out a prop box. There's a couple of plants here, some begonias, but anyways, so this plant is the mother plant. It put out a vine here and it put out actually three green leaves. So that I chopped it off and put it in a separate pot because that's done. That's not going to give me any variegated leaves. So uh, I can see here that there are a few nodes that are activating. I know that there are a few nodes even down there. So, that, so there's a few hope of variegated. As you can see, actually this growth point here, it's going to be half variegated this branch here. And then there's another branch. I'd, I'd have little hope for this one because this one was an all green vine. So I'm not sure if this is going to give me a variegated leaf. But then yeah, so this is going to activate and maybe the one below that may activate as well. So I have a few chances, but I'm going to have to wait. So yeah, I'm a little bit worried about this setup though. There's an aglonema here. I don't know if it's rotted off or not. No, it's still okay, I guess. Yeah, I wanted to see how prop boxes work. Supposedly the humidity will do wonders on the rooting. So I'm going to give it a few more weeks and I'll give you another update. Here's a two months update on one of the cuttings. It rotted off. I may have overwatered it. Uh, so I just noticed that it rotted after I moved. So it looks like kind of like this. So I'm just going to keep it in the soil. Uh, if I had more time, I would just have rehabbed it in moss but i don't have the time so i'm just gonna leave it like this but it's put out reverted uh, green leaves so i don't know i'm just not so invested in this one and just as a reminder uh, one of the other cutting was actually traded off i sent that to a friend of mine he overwatered that too so that plant is dead so one reminder is that these guys maybe they just really hate water because again look at how many holes it has it really doesn't need much water. There's not nowhere for the water to go to. On top of that, half of the leaf is variegated, which means it's not really photosynthesizing. So only half of the leaf is producing. So keep your variegated Adenosonii very dry. That's my advice. Humid, but very, very dry. Here's that parent plant. It actually grew two vines, but it was all green. So I cut off the vines and I actually propagated it right here. So just plopped it into this pot here. So it's not really doing much. It's going to put up green leaves from here on, I guess. That's really disappointing. But there are a few more active nodes here, down here that are growing. I see one, two, three. Hopefully some of them will be variegated. But yeah, I'm not sure. There's actually a lot of nodes here that potentially can put out growth. So I just shouldn't wa overwater this. It's actually very wet now. It just rained. So I'm going to put it back here. You know what? I'm going to put it back here. So it's away from the rain a bit. And yeah, let's, let's hope for the best. So just as a head count, most of them actually have failed or died or been overwatered. This one is the only survivor is putting out four leaves. So this is really hanging on a thread. I actually want to repot this soon into a terracotta pot. And ooh, what is that thing? That looks like a lizard's tail or exoskeleton. I don't know what it is. But I need to repot this and I'm going to pot it up higher because as you can see there are a lot of aerial roots here that's ready to root. So yeah, terracotta pot will actually dry out a lot faster and it's a lot safer. Yeah, but this is my last one. So wish me luck. I'm going to 
grow this and I'm gonna show you an update on this and also the parent plant to see if we can get more variegated leaf. But this is turning out to be quite a lesson for me. Here's another month later and I, things are actually looking better. This is going to be the final update because this video has dragged on for way too long. So it's putting out a whole new leaf that is almost uh, half variegated. As you can see, the leaves in this one is very, very beautifully spread out. I mean, it's variegation, although it did give me one green leaf. So yeah, I put this in a different, in a bigger pot and I give him a bit of moss so it can root into this moss. So hopefully I can propagate off this, but it's got a lot of nodes here, as you can see. There are actually a lot of nodes here where new vines could appear potentially in the future. But then tracing variegation on these is so, so difficult. And this is actually the parent plant. It's put out uh, more vines. And I did see that one of the vines had put out a variegated leaf. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take off some of these uh, vines completely off because there are a lot of uh, nodes down here. I don't know if you can see. There are a lot of nodes down here that are not activated yet. So if I cut this all green leaves off, it may give the plant a lot of chance to push out new growth on this vine because this is the vine that I really want to focus on. Although, hang on one second, I may actually wait for these new vines to have some decent aerial roots below before I cut them off because I do want to grow them separately just in case there may be some variegation left in the stem uh, that we haven't seen here because as you can see, their variegation is so, so random. Yeah, I'm looking at the new leaf for variegation too. This is a very, very stressful plant. And just so you know, before I let you guys go, this plant was one of my most expensive purchases. It was actually about 23 million Indonesian rupiah. It is now, the last I heard, worth only about seven rupiah. So I lost about three times the value on these guys. So these are not good plants to uh, invest in. And yeah, and I swapped one. Again, I got other plants from this, but I haven't managed to sell any of these. So I didn't recoup any of the losses. So this is actually my biggest loss so far so just be careful when you're doubling with rare plants uh, but a lot of people have success with these don't get me wrong so a lot of people grew this very successfully and they made a lot of money out of this now, at the same time they managed to grow some beautiful specimens that are big um, they're very very instagrammable and i'm gonna keep some for myself but i really do want to at least you know make back my losses but i unfortunately for this one i kind of have given up on that so yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you have any questions regarding plant care and propagations, I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye.